so I've just got back from my trip with Richard. We did Cumberland, Climbies, Pyman Heads, Sandy Cape, Balfour, and then finished on the thousand dollar track. I was helping someone that got stuck on a rock on Cumberland and I winched him off and my motor all of a sudden started going really, really slow and I wasn't sure what was going on, but I did know that we had to do a lot more four-wheel driving. And so after we got off Cumberland, Rich and I actually headed back here, took the Cobra off, put the Warn on the GQ and went back down so that I had a winch for the rest of the trip. Why are we back in the shed? Because I thought we were going for five days. Went to use this winch that hasn't been used in a while and the motor seems like it's burnt out. Gonna put the Warn back on. Go away! Where's the warm? Let's put this one in. Now that I'm home, I want to see what went wrong and maybe have a think about why it happened and what we can do so it doesn't happen again. But before we do jump right in, how about we have a little bit of a look at what we got up to? Check it out. Even just watching that makes me so sad that it's over. We had an absolute blast. Massive thanks to Richard and all of his crew for having me along on that trip. The tracks were still nice and wet, despite it being summer still. But yeah, the car is in a very sorry state. I still need to get the radiator out to rinse all the mud out. I can't get it into second gear. The red winch motor is toast and i've got a really really nasty death wobble but yeah more about that later if you want to see that entire tassie series make sure you tune into richard's youtube channel design and built in the coming weeks to see everything that unfolded it was such an awesome trip uh let's get into this winch now I've taken both motors off and i could see that this one has had the stator coils burn uh, which are like coils that go around all the magnets 
And so, yeah, this motor is toast. You can smell it, it's all burnt. And so that can pretty much get chucked straight in the bin. Now, the rotor that came out of it actually looks fine. And that's the one that I've put back in here. And this came out of the good one. But yeah, both rotors look absolutely fine. But this one, you actually have to cut it down in order to get it into the adapter for the twin motor. And so this one had to get taken out and I had to put the rotor out of this one into the motor that's gone back onto the winch. And so what happened? Well, on this twin motor setup, you got two aux motors and then the solenoid on the end that feeds both motors. And the motor that was closest to the solenoid was actually totally fine. It was the second motor in line, which is this one that burnt out. The only two theories I can really come up with so far with my limited knowledge of DC motors motors is that the first motor received the voltage and by the time it got to the second motor it had choked the voltage and so the amp spiked and it burnt something out that's one of the theories the other theory is something internally here shorted out causing it to you know get hot and burn out that way but either way that is totally toast. The Warn is back on the GQ and I think this is probably going to go on the GU until it's out of the naughty corner. And I am going to be swapping the ratio back to a torquier ratio as opposed to a speed ratio because the GU isn't gonna be relying on its winch as much as the GQ. And so how do we change that ratio? Before it was a big pulley driving a small pulley, a more torquey ratio, you swap around like that. And so that's the way we're gonna put them back on there. All these gears and the spline look super healthy. The belt, no signs of slipping or breaking, which is really cool. The only other problem I did have, the circlip had popped off the opposite end, causing it to ride pretty hard into this. And so the guys at Roadrunner sent me a brand new one, which is really cool. So yeah, let's assemble this all back together with the new end plate. I wanna get it onto the GU so that I can make sure that this is all still working. Well, that was a bit of a mission. I had to use the old trusty block and tackle to get it in there because I don't have my engine crane here. I don't have anything here really yet. So got the red winch on the front of the GU back to a single motor. I am just going to connect it up to 12 volt to start with just to make sure that this is all still working as it should, that my air is all working as it should. And then I can get the mega lifes in the back and all the charging system. I haven't actually decided what kind of charging system I'm going with yet. I did have the Enerdrive running on the GQ, but I kind of want to try maybe a different brand this time. I mean, the Enerdrive's been awesome, but you know, I'm just the type of person that likes to try different stuff as I go and to, to learn what I like. But yeah, it's pretty dark now. I think we're going to call it there. So I'll catch you guys soon. So this started out as a bit of a post-mortem on the $1,000 track, right? That red winch cooked a motor, and so we fixed that up, and now I, I decided while I'm here, I might as well get it mounted up in the GU, and there's a few things I need to change to the in-cab switches in order to get ready for 24 volt. You know, I come out here this morning, and I thought, right, I'm gonna clean up all the wiring under here before I get started with that in-cab switching, and this is what I've pulled out of the GU so far. Right now I'm halfway through the day and I've sort of got nowhere. I want to explain what I'm actually doing. So I'm going to put up a wiring diagram on how I wire an in-cab switch for a 12 volt car running a 12 volt winch. And that's how this car was wired. So I use five core trailer wire, pinch, 
an earth from the front, a power from the front, and then those two colors are dedicated to bringing those into the cab. That's earth for the switch illumination, earth for the winch controller, earth for everything in the system. And then that power gets switched in one isolator switch, and that feeds power to the winch switch. And then that becomes two more colors of the trailer core wire that goes back out to give you your in and out signals for the winch. Now, for a 12 volt application, it's really easy just to grab earth and 12 volt from the winch because they've got earth and power right there at one end of the lead. So I usually just nick that from there. In a 24 volt application, obviously that terminal on top of the solenoid is 24 volt. It's a little bit different in a 24 volt application. I've actually tend to grab earth and power from inside the car and then you only use three of the five core trailer wire, which is earth in and out. And I grab power from inside the cab here. So yeah, I'll show you the back of the switches here and you can see what's going on. And then we'll go up the front of the car and start pinning that out ready to go to the solenoid. So there it is there. It might seem mega confusing, but all it is is power from somewhere inside the cab And then that relays power over to the winch switch and then you got earth from inside the cab that just Earths both of these switches out for the illumination and that also links up to give an earth out the front for the solenoid and then green and yellow is your in and out signals, which goes out the front also to give the in and out signals on the solenoid. So let's move down the front now. We'll start pinning that out for the red winch. So as we talked about in there, we've got green and yellow for in and out signals, and then we've got earth. And on the red winch, that's all you need to give it. So that is like a tri Deutsch connector. Now, before I feed them into the plug, I wanna make sure I've got the right ones in the right spot. So I'm just gonna connect one on and see which direction that goes. And I've put a little white mark on the drum so I know which direction that goes. I'm just gonna tap the button. All right, so I was hitting in and that was going in the correct direction. So we'll pop this in in that order. Okay, well, that is the red winch all wired up for now. It's just on 12 volt and the motor sounds healthy, so that's good. I'm glad it's all still working. I'm probably gonna like just wrap the rope around the bar and then wind it in under tension. I'll go for a drive just near home. I've got plenty of bush just near home. And so yeah, that's all done for now. I think it might be time to have a bit of a break and have some lunch. I think it's time to put this new carpet in. I think I've decided to take all of this out and bolt it through the carpet. Every time I've got new carpet or vinyl, I have rushed it a bit, but with this new carpet, I'd really like to bolt all this stuff through the carpet just so I don't have big holes cut in it everywhere. So yeah, I might get started on that. So now, as I go, I'm just gonna stick a scribe up through the floor and then that's where the bolts go. And so I'm making some progress. All I do is stick a skewer up where there's a hole from underneath and then turn it over and then use one of these punches. Just punch a hole through it like that and then line it back up and bolt whatever's supposed to go there. No fun to watch at all, no fun to do. But yeah, work my way through it. Okay, so that's the back part all in. I'm just about to start doing the front. I'm just working out where to cut holes in this front bit. I've got a feeling that it goes all the way up under there. I might actually undo this little U bracket here in order to be able to slide the carpet right up and in. I think that's the best way to go. Do it once, do it right. And so I thought to top off the interior, we've got this awesome new carpet and I've got all that wiring out, put the new winch switches in. I actually got sent these a little while ago from On Track Cords on Instagram. Now, I'd seen them around and I'd never really thought to get some of my own. But then one day, I think it was mum even getting into the GQ, but it actually pulled right out and broke one of the plastic ones up here. And so I've got them in the GQ now and he sent some also for the GU. So yeah, I never really thought to change over to these but they're actually really cool and really strong so yeah I've got this last one to put in over there so yeah I'll show you how easy it is yeah I just make sure that it's pulling in the right direction and then tighten them right up there it is super simple
So what's next? The next thing to happen is probably going to be the hoist getting installed in here. And so on the 19th, I've got the hoist getting installed. I also have another shipment from King Chrome coming, just some benches and shelves and things like that to make this more of a workable space. The GQ is super, super tired after that trip. I can no longer get it in into second gear. I'll show you a couple of clips of that. It just grinds and you cannot get it into second gear. And so I actually have a new gearbox to go in, but I've been waiting for the hoist and the transmission jack to do that just because I've done it on the ground enough times. I also have a wobble at about 55 k's an hour that I'm pretty certain will either be panard bushes or kingpin bearings. Those kingpin bearings haven't been changed for a long, long time. And so, yeah, that's all jobs that can happen once I get the hoist in and I'll go through all that with you guys. What's next on this car? So one of my mates, Matt, Kinzella. You probably know him from building a lot of really cool cars in the industry. He actually drew up a battery tray for the rear of this that'll go in on the opposite side of the sub tank. And so I'm currently getting that CNC cut and CNC folded at the moment. And so we'll be able to put that in, put the mega lifes in and do all the 24 volt setup for this. And then once all that's under there, I can start building the tray, bar work, canopy and all that. So lots of really exciting stuff to come. But as I'm sure you can understand, you know, I've been on a trip. It's been Easter. I've been getting my stuff from my old place to my new place. So it's just a lot of odd jobs here and there where I can get the time as well as obviously working a full time job. But yeah, I appreciate you guys sticking with me and I hope you enjoyed still and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Don't forget to stay tuned for Richard's upcoming episodes of our Tassie Torture Tour. See you guys soon.